The concept of the bone migratory pathway I think is a very um, contemporary in, uh, as we evolve our understanding of advanced prostate cancer, and some might argue any other metastatic tumor that has a predilection for the bone. Uh, in our symposium, uh, I make the, the observation that back at the end of the 19th century, Stephen Paget uh, coined the concept of seed and soil. And there's something particularly trophic in the bone microenvironment, the bone milieu, where prostate cancer cells want to go and set up shop. Uh, this becomes important now because we have so many different therapies within the last five years that can slow down the progression of prostate cancer and prolong survival. We've always known th with prostate cancer that the androgen-androgen receptor axis is extremely important. And that's one gear in the mechanism. But a second gear in the mechanism of uh, proliferation of prostate cancer cells is the bone microenvironment. Ninety percent or more of patients who die with castration-resistant prostate cancer will have bone metastases. So in our symposium, we, myself, uh, Chris Parker, Francis Sundrum, we review imaging as well as the data from the recent Al Simca trial, which demonstrated the survival advantage of giving radium-223, a very novel uh, radiopharmaceutical, what's known as an alpha particle, very different from the historical beta-gamma particles, which are much, much smaller. The important take-home message of that is, is less penetration into the marrow, so there's less myelosuppression. But most importantly, in our case example, uh, uh, and my enjoyment for giving radium and having the discussion with my patients, in addition to the discussion regarding abiraterone and zalutamide, docetaxel, uh, possibly immunotherapy studies, but for radium, it prolongs survival first and foremost. So I don't give the drug for bone palliation. I target the bone for patients who have bone metastases because it's prolonged survival and it stabilizes the bone metastatic sites. While at the same time, it preserves function. It maintains quality of life. It's very well tolerated. The safety side effect profile is really quite good. And I can say that to you, having given the first dose post-FDA approval in the world back in May of 2013. When I first started using the therapy, it was mostly after chemotherapy patients. Now 90% of my patients are receiving it before chemotherapy. So that was a big take-home message for our symposium. But I mentioned two Ps. The first P is prolong life. Second P, preserve function, quality of life. And the third it, P is prevent complications of therapy, toxicities. So um, those three things are always part of my uh, physician-patient shared discussion regarding any kind of therapy, whether it's an oncolytic or a non-oncolytic.